Hey everyone, uh, welcome to week 10, day three, uh, in this uh, Tackling Our Fears week. So Monday we painted uh, Danny's hands with the fingers interlaced and I think we did a really good job. Uh, yesterday, my fear of painting cars. I always thought I sucked at painting cars. So uh, we really went like head first into trying to paint like a cool car plus speckled lighting. That's terrible. So two of my biggest fears. Uh, and I think we're doing really well. <laughs> I feel empowered. So today we're gonna see, you know, what fear I tackle next. Okay, let's get started with our third day uh, where we're trying to exercise the uh, painting demons and we're trying to confront our, uh, <laughs> our painting fears. Yesterday was tough for me. And I know it seems ridiculous, but painting cars for me, drawing cars for me, it just seemed like something I, I was never going to be able to do when I was working as an illustrator. I always felt like it was just above me. It was the subject matter that was way too complex. And I, uh, you know, I, I just wasn't meant to, uh, to do that. I was meant to paint people, but not cars. But I think yesterday we, uh, we did a good job and, and I was very happy. And it gave me the energy, it gave me the uh, strength I needed to tackle this. And by the way, I, <laughs> I sharpied uh, Squint and Simplify on the, uh, on the tape that's holding the, uh, the piece of linen because I thought this is going to be a tough painting. It's a very, very simple painting, but it's going to be very, very tough to paint. And I think the reason I thought it was going to be tough to paint is because in my mind, I carry this memory of this one particular painting N.C. Wyeth did. N.C. Wyeth, if you guys don't know, is an American illustrator, a very, very famous uh, Golden Age American illustrator. He had Pyle as a teacher, Howard Pyle, and you can totally see Pyle's influence in a lot of Wyeth's paintings. Yes, in the way he painted, but also compositionally. I think there's a ton of devices that he used that are very, very present and prevalent on, on Pyle's paintings. But Wyeth was just a tremendous, tremendous illustrator. He did very simple paintings that read just directly, just immediately, with such, such power that I'm sure that if, <laughs> if you were a kid in the early 1900s, it must have been magic. It must have been absolutely magic. And one of the books, if not the most famous he is for illustrating was Treasure Island. And I've seen a ton of those paintings, but there's one painting that I've never seen. I've only seen uh, reproductions of, but you know, this is why illustration is just absolutely magic because to this day, I still have it etched in my memory. He's illustrating the moment where uh, Jim Hawkins is loading up the uh, treasure in bread bags he actually has to depict this enormous amount of treasure. And when you think about it, that's such a complex subject matter. It is just so insane to evoke this crazy amount of treasure. When I saw this painting, I was floored. Just by seeing like this old reproduction, I, I don't know, it lit up something like in my heart. It's incredible. It's absolutely incredible. The reason why I find it just so amazing is that he took something that I couldn't have imagined painting. I still don't. With whatever ability that I have right now, if I had to paint that subject matter, I would be way in over my head. Way, way in over my head. I would probably have to make a ton of paintings before I thought I could start to understand how to solve what he did so, so insanely magically. The reason why it kept in my head, maybe it was because I remember a Little Rascals episode with pirates, or maybe it's because I grew up with Goonies. So I, I, I have that fascination with hidden treasure, but it just felt like it was fantasy. It just, I, it, I don't know how he did it. And <laughs> hopefully my stammering can actually convey how I think, you know, this painting is just, I don't know, it's bigger than life, I feel. 
because he had to communicate a treasure that you can't imagine, this treasure that's in your wildest dreams. I think he did that incredibly. I'm talking about like this traditional illustration that fits perfectly with Treasure Island and how Wyeth, that was a very, very simple, direct painter, was able to communicate beautifully, just masterfully, a perfect moment in that book. That image just ingrained in my brain. And I haven't been able to forget it ever since. So I thought this thing that I've recognized in my life as being literally this mountain of gold is this mountain that I could never, ever climb. It's this painting that I could never, ever solve. And it was so intelligently painted that I don't feel I have the painting IQ to even solve it the way Wyeth solved it. If you don't know this, Wyeth was a very economical painter. So he would just know exactly where to put opaque paint, but he would also know exactly what to leave as an underpainting and just work with very thin sort of washes of paint. So there's a ton of this image that he painted that's just hinted. I mean, it is painted because technically it's solved, but there's so much stuff that is not there that your head is just filling in, that your imagination is just filling in, that it's just incredible. I think that that's the power of painting. And specifically, that's the power of illustration where if you're reading a book and you're, you're just enamored by all these words and your imagination is creating all these worlds, that you have enough information in those words to create this world that you kind of feel that you, you couldn't have conceived any other way. You had to be fed these words in order for you to create this magical world. And I feel that he gets to that. He gets to the core of what amazing illustration is. And while I can't paint, and I always say this whenever I, I'm citing another painter, I'm referencing another just masterful painter, uh, I can't paint like them, but I can learn from them. So while I can't paint like uh, Wyeth, I can try to evoke some of the things that he did while I'm trying to solve not a treasure. <laughs> this is not a, a treasure that's hidden in a cave. I don't need bread bags to uh, load up all this treasure. This is just loose change that is in a plastic bag that's being hit by sunlight. <laughs> and one little coin is just angled perfectly and it's getting all this ray of sun, this beautiful, beautiful ray of sun. That was the problem that I was trying to solve today. This painting went back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. And I think I hit a moment in the painting where I was just trying to put, put, put paint down and everything just seemed heavy. It just really seemed like I was trying to describe, yes, little bits of coin. I wasn't trying to discern every single coin, but I was trying to hint that there was a lot, but it just wasn't working. It really, really wasn't. I was trying to hit my ellipses with the coins and especially those moments where the coin turns and catches a little bit of light, but it just wasn't working. And for some reason, I was like, okay, remember, you don't have to say, you can insinuate, you can hint, you can kind of get the ball rolling and then your eye is just going to complete everything else. Your mind's eye is just going to fill every little gap that you leave there. So don't think that you have to enunciate everything, 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 coin, coin, coin. You just have to get to the core of what this bag full of change feels like and how when you look at that bag, you're not cognizant of having, I don't know, $20 in that bag or 50 quarters and, you know, whatever so many dimes. No, we just know it's loose change. So there has to be something in there that is loose, that is just chaotic and random about it. And I remembered that painting. I remember that Wyeth painting and I was like, I just need a focal point. And obviously my focal point was the one coin that's catching that sunlight. And then everything else just has to be insinuated, just beautifully hinted. 
There needs to be space between those coins. They need to be toppling over each other. Even though it's a, it's a very small plastic bag, it just, it's containing all this chaos. And how do you paint chaos? <laughs> how do you paint something that's not organized? How do you paint something that's random? There has to be then a little bit of chaos in your brush or in the way you put paint down. Because if I want it to be overly descriptive, then I'm going to have to draw every single one of those coins. But that's not what I wanted. That's not the lesson that was behind why this painting. The real reason that I've always, always loved that painting is because it's telling you, the viewer, that you are an incredibly important part of this painting, that this painting needs you to complete it. And I love that. I absolutely love that. I just, even as I'm saying it, I'm just almost like deflating just because I know that that is probably one of the most beautiful aspects of any image the fact that it acknowledges the viewer. When I see this painting, I imagine what it was like. I can kind of feel what it was like to just open up one of these books. And I've looked at the original edition of Treasure Island, where it was printed <laughs> terribly. <laughs> but I love those illustrations. It, there's just something there that it's almost like looking at, at just old pixel video games. You kind of knew what that monster looked like but your head just completed everything else and never realized it but half of the video game was occurring like in your head and not in the screen those old books the manner in which they were printed they let you do that they ask that of you so a lot of the fear today was tackling something that was highly highly specific because i'm trying to paint a bag <laughs> full of change because I'm trying to evoke this one painting that's been etched in my brain for years. I mean, over 20 years. And I'm trying to say in my own very humble way, okay, let me see if I can kind of experience the smallest part of what he was able to do with that painting. And Yes, it was about painting loose change. Yes, it was about painting this small treasure. But it was also about acknowledging, wow, there's just something incredible about painting and about being able to, to communicate a universe full of something with very, very simple tools. I absolutely love that, that you can evoke grandness with simplicity it blows my mind and i hope that i in that sense <laughs> i never grow up because i think that what i find unattainable about that image is the fact that there's a child in me that looks at it and feels that it is otherworldly it is absolutely magical and i don't want that ever to go away <laughs> i don't want ever to renounce that feeling because if I look at paintings and they don't do that for me anymore, then ah, I don't know. Then I'll say, ah, oh, something's wrong with painting. But as long as painting keeps doing that to me, it keeps just shaking my stomach and, and making me gasp and, and just feel like a little kid again, then everything is all right with the world, I feel. So that was today. That was tackling a very big fear today because it was a painting it's an image that means it means literally the world to me so i think we did a we did a good job it was a very tough painting to paint i feel this tiny little bag ugh i can't imagine just trying to say thousands of these coins <laughs> i don't know how he did it he's absolute genius so this is just a dumb little way of saying you know N.C. Wyeth, you are magical, and I appreciate everything you did. So that was it for today. Thank you guys for hanging out, and I'll see you guys tomorrow where we try to tackle another painting fair. <laughs> Bye.